incredibly satisfying. That before and after is pretty impressive, am I wrong? Today I'm gonna be testing out new drugstore makeup for fall, but specifically from brands that I don't hear a lot of people talking about a lot here on YouTube. And there's even one brand where I think this is the first time I'm trying any of their products. So this is gonna be a ton of fun. If you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. The brands we're talking about today include Catrice, Koki Cosmetics, Pop Beauty, and Pixie Beauty. So let's get into it. Jumping straight into this first brand that I have never tried before, Pop Beauty. It turns out they are available now at CVS as well as on their website. And they just did a full on like rebrand redesign because some of these products look familiar to me like the Permanent Pout and the Light Show palette, but this packaging is like brand new. So we'll be trying a few things out from them today, starting with their Face Magnet Primer. It is a brightening and antioxidant primer that is supposed to act like a magnet for face makeup. Now, after a few years of not wearing face primer in my normal routine and sort of speaking out against it, I will admit that I have been reaching for it a little bit more often now that I have been noticing fine lines on my face and just wanting that little extra smoothness for my foundation to go on top of. So just wanted to put that out there just in case you're like, Miranda, I thought you didn't use primer. It's definitely still not an everyday thing, but I'm a little more open to it. All right, so let's open this up. This is a pretty good size. Ooh, okay, so I expected it to be more of like a silicone texture, but it looks more like a lotion or moisturizer. This is a really interesting texture. This is just really unexpected. Now I'll admit, at least with Pop Beauty, I'm not sure if these products are necessarily new launches, but they're new to CVS, so there's that. And I'm hoping new to a lot of you as well, because I really don't hear other YouTubers talking about this brand. I do like that it feels really lightweight and I like that it doesn't feel like I already have a thick layer of product on before I even start my makeup. Moving on to the face, I'm gonna be trying a new BB cream today from the brand Catrice. So Catrice is sold online on their website and some of their products are also on Ulta Beauty's website. Not sure if they sell Catrice in store at Ulta yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. So this is their new Hydro BB Cream. It has 99% natural ingredients. It's vegan and non-comedogenic. I'm gonna try the shade medium warm and see what happens. I did a little bit of preliminary swatching to see what would match me best and this looked like this was it. So this is supposed to be an ultra hydrating tinted beauty balm with shea butter for a radiant natural complexion. That makes me a little nervous. <laughs> it is still pretty warm here. So it's still like sweaty season in my area. So, you know, it, it, it makes me apprehensive. I feel like this is a product just from the description that I would probably want to use more so in the thick of fall and winter, but let's try it out. And I'm also going to be applying it with a new blending sponge from Koki Cosmetics. And we'll get into some more Koki products today as well. And just in case you didn't know, I do have a coupon code for Koki's website. I will put it down here or in the description. Okay, so let's go ahead and just put, ooh, that's looking a lot darker than it did when I swatched it. Oh, okay. This shade is not as tragic as I thought it was gonna be. There are very few BB creams that I feel give me enough coverage that makes me feel comfortable with, you know, my acne and my hyperpigmentation. So I don't expect there to be a lot of coverage coming from a product like this. As you can see, it's definitely evening out my skin tone. It's not providing a lot of coverage. You can still see my spots pretty clearly, but it feels really nice and lightweight. The finish is also, ooh, Ooh, let's let's keep blending. The finish is also um, pretty nice. It's not dewy, but you can for sure see a natural looking radiance and glow. Let's see if this is buildable at all for the coverage. Okay, it's a little bit buildable, not by much, but I'm definitely achieving a little bit more coverage. Having a hard time covering some of the redness on my nose. Can you see that? First impressions of this BB cream. It feels really nice on the face. It feels very lightweight and refreshing. And even in the areas where I layered it, it 
doesn't feel heavy. However, with that said, even after layering it, I feel like we're maxing out at light medium coverage. Like I'm not even sure we really reached medium. What do you think? It sort of just gave a very light blur and tint to the face. And for some people that's all you need or want. So I think that this might be a good choice if you are not looking for something more heavier coverage. I do wanna cover a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab a concealer and just spot conceal. I will say that I'm really liking this sponge. It's blending incredibly easily. It's really soft on the face. Moving on to eyeshadow, let's open up this palette from Pop Beauty. This is called their Light Show Palette, specifically in Fire Fit. I thought this looked like a good transition palette from summer to fall because I still like wearing those warm oranges and yellows this time of year. Here's what she looks like. And I believe this is a $14 palette. For the size, I think that's reasonable, but let me not speak too soon because it's really all about the quality, right? Here is a little bit of an up close look. And as you can see, we've got mattes, we have shimmers. We also have a couple glitters. Hmm, should I try doing something with those today? Let me go ahead and prime with my trusty MAC Paint Pot. This is called Sunburst. And it's almost like, I don't really know how to explain this shade. It's a reddish, orange, pink. You wanna come in closer? Ooh. Okay, pigment. <laughs> okay, well, first of all, this is translating exactly how it looks in the pan. So that is incredibly satisfying. It doesn't look any duller. It's not leaning more orange than red. Like this is a very unique shade. It's pretty intense. I mean, I'm shearing it out obviously and blending it, but this pigment packs a punch. Ooh, I'm really excited for whatever look we're going for today. I have no plans, but I think this is gonna be fun now that one shade has <laughs> kind of calmed my nerves a little bit. I'm gonna go into this shade, which is called Dazzling Solstice. That's going to be my crease and outer corner shade. Wow, again, it's just translating exactly how it looks. I love when that happens. I love when you can just rely on a shadow to look like what you think it's gonna look like. You know what I mean? These shadows are almost so pigmented where I'm like, ooh, I need to blend this out so I can get that gradient going. But don't get me wrong, they're easy to blend. It's just, I didn't expect so much color <laughs> in one dip of the brush. Okay, let me just swatch these two oranges. I feel like I need some inspo on how those are gonna look. So I have this like satin, bright orange, wow, that's bright. <laughs> and then I've got the glitter, the pressed glitter. I wonder if I need to use this with like a glitter glue. Those are so pretty. I'll speed through me cutting my crease for you. So I'm looking at the back of the palette and I think I got the names wrong of the previous shades that I used. And the key is actually really confusing. I'm pretty sure they should have flipped the order that they put the shades in. This shade is actually called Phoenix Blaze and this is Antique Peach. It makes a little bit more sense that the yellow is called Sunburst. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip into Peach Flare, which is this orange shade that we just swatched. With the brush, this isn't applying as intense as it looked on the back of my hand when I swatched it with my finger. So I might go all the way up to the cut and then go in with my finger to sort of deepen it up. Yeah, the satin finish definitely applies a little more smoothly with the finger with a bit more pigmentation. Now I'm wondering if I should apply the glitter with my finger too. Okay, well, let's go in. So I'm gonna use the glitter, which is called Dazzling Solstice, and I'm gonna pat it over the border of the concealed area and outer corner, and then bring it in over that orange. Ooh, okay, I'm getting a little bit of fallout. I expected that. For the very inner corner, I do wanna dip into the yellow shade, which is called Sunburst. Now, matte yellows are pretty darn hard to get right. I have not really found a good matte yellow that I love. And this one is like, okay. Like I can see it, it's a little chalky. Hmm, 
Hmm, that's one thing I think we're missing in this palette is a highlight shade. All right, we're done with the eyeshadow. This palette is for sure promising. It makes me want to try more of their eyeshadow. Overall, I like it. For $14, I think you get a lot of shades to play with and good shades at that. Next, I'm going to tight line with the Koki Velvet Smooth Eyeliner. Ooh. That just glides on. And I will be doing winged liner with my new go-to, the Maybelline Hyper Easy Liner. For mascara today, this is not a new release, but it's new to me. And again, from a brand that I don't think gets enough credit, the Ulta Beauty brand. Ulta Beauty has their own makeup line, just like the Sephora collection, and you can usually find it near the checkout aisle. They have a ton of products that I genuinely love. I've been using their brow pencil a lot recently. I used one of their eyeshadow palettes for my wedding. So I'm excited to try this. This is their New Heights Lifting Mascara. Ooh, it's like a tiny comb wand. It's so cute. Ooh, it is adding a lot of length. It's doing a pretty good job at keeping my lashes separated as well. Wow, <laughs> that before and after is pretty impressive. Am I wrong? I'm like layering this mascara up and it's not getting clumpy either. I love this. It really added lift and I have pretty straight lashes, but it also added length and volume. So, I mean, it checked all the boxes and you don't have to build it up as much as I did. If you kind of just leave it to one or two layers, you end up with more of a wispy vibe like this. But if you really want to bring the drama, it layers so easily. I really like that the wand is easy to use for both the top and bottom lashes. This might be a new everyday favorite. <laughs> Let's talk about what's new at Pixie. Now, Pixie is a brand that I talk about frequently because I love them and I don't think that people talk about their makeup enough. Their skincare gets some hype. They have a few cult favorite skincare products and their skincare products work really well, but their makeup kind of goes unnoticed. So they just released these Nuance Quartets, which are sort of like all-in-one face palettes. This one is called Sugar Blossom, and this next one is called Honey Nectar. Ooh, I think Honey Nectar is going to go well with my skin tone. So we've got a bronzer, a blush, and two highlight shades. Now highlights, Pixie does well. They make some of my absolute favorite highlighting products at the drugstore. All right, so let's dip into this bronzer and see. It looks relatively neutral, so hopefully I can use it for a contour. I'm not seeing any shimmer either, so thank goodness. Mm, it's only slightly warm. Like, I can definitely get away with using this as a contour with my skin tone, but the one in the Sugar Blossom palette might work better if you have cooler skin. It's on the subtler side as well. This is not as intense as their natural contour powder, which I really like. And going into this blush, I'm gonna be very gentle with it because it looks like it is bright. Ooh, that is a really pretty color. I'm not sure how much this screams fall. It is a little bit more of like a summery face palette in my opinion. I like to go more for like mauves in fall when it comes to my blush shade, maybe an apricot, but you know what, whatever. You can wear whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. This is definitely a really pretty happy shade. Really excited to see how this highlighter looks though. So this one is called Honey. It looks pretty glittery on top or metallic rather. Not sure if that's a spray over or not. Let me try to move some of the glitter out of the way actually. Mm, yeah, it looks like there's a slight spray over so I wanna see what it actually looks like underneath all that. Ooh, ooh, pretty. It's definitely still a shimmery, slightly glittery highlight, relying more so on those glitter particles versus a pigment, which is not necessarily my favorite type of highlighter, but I don't mind it for certain looks. It's just a little bit more in your face, you know? It's, you're definitely not fooling anyone saying like, oh, this is my skin, it's so glowy. <laughs> I really wish they would have used the highlighting formula that's in the Rach Loves palette. That one's not glittery at all. It is just so glowy and strobey, and I could see myself using this palette a lot more if that was the type of highlighter that was in here. 
Editing Miranda here, I ended up swatching both of these palettes after filming because I was curious about the other highlights. And it turns out the one highlight shade I tested in this video was sort of the dud of the bunch. As you can see here, the other three highlights are super glowy and pigment forward. And that's what I was expecting. That's the formula that I really like from the brand. I just happened to test the one glittery one. So I wanted to throw that out there just in case you were wondering about the other shades. Because this is a Luke, but it's not an everyday Luke for me. <laughs> this is almost like a festival highlight, if you will, just for my tastes. Oh, I forgot we had this from Koki Cosmetics. This is their Velvet Smooth Eyeliner in Champagne. Maybe I can use this to highlight because there was no highlight shade in the eyeshadow palette. Ooh, okay, that adds a very nice little pop to the inner corner. Ooh, this might be my new favorite way to do an inner corner highlight because I typically put champagne there anyway. Did that just elevate this entire <laughs> eye look? Let's see if I can put it lightly on the brow bone too. Yeah, that's really pretty, okay. Okay, moving on, we have two more products to test out. This is the Koki Retractable Lip Liner in Warm Nude. Ooh, this is like really close to my natural lip shade, just better. <laughs> it's really creamy and pigmented. I would probably just wear this on its own. And that's another tip. You can totally wear lip liner like by itself. You don't have to cover it with anything if it's pigmented enough. This lip liner is definitely a matte formula. It feels a tad drying, but when it comes to lip liners, that's usually helpful in creating a base for your lipstick to stick to if you want to fill it in like I did to really extend the life of your lipstick. I will say I am loving this shade. I would totally wear this as just a lipstick alone and maybe pop a little bit of gloss on top to help with that matte feeling. But today we are going to be topping this with one of the Pop Beauty Permanent Pout Liquid Lipsticks. So I have heard of these and I've heard that they are almost completely budge proof smudge proof, transfer proof, like they're supposed to be super long wearing. This is the shade Butter Babe, which I think will match the liner pretty well. Ooh, we've got a very long and flat applicator for the lipstick. Oh, a little lighter. <laughs> Actually, we can make that work and sort of blend it into the edges. How does that look? I know I overdrew my lips a little bit. <laughs> Who needs injections when you have lip liner? All right, this liquid lipstick is drying down to be a very true flat matte, both in the appearance and a little bit the feel as well. It feels like it's a bit drying or, or like tightening on the lips just a bit. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, I'm pretty sure I have a bunch of these in the old packaging that I never opened. So if you want to see like an all day wear test or a bunch of different swatches of these, let me know. That could be something that I bring you. Tell me in the comments if you wanna see that. They feel very similar to the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink Liquid Lipsticks. So if you don't mind how those feel, then these will be no issue. If you think that those feel like thick or too matte, then you might not like these. And looking a little closely, I am starting to see the glitter shadow migrate a little. So I think that is going to need some type of glitter primer. I don't think you're gonna be able to get away with just putting it on top of your regular primer or on top of other eyes eyeshadow like I thought that I was. I really thought I was gaming the system. It didn't work. <laughs> it doesn't look awful. It's just not necessarily staying exactly where I applied it. Gotta say, love how this look came out. I am so digging these colors. But tell me, what do you think of these brands, of these products? Did anything catch your eye? And let me know if there are any other brands at the drugstore that you don't really hear a lot of people talking about that you'd want me to explore more. Today's shout out goes to Jamie. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. Enjoy Join me over in this video next where I go dairy free for 30 days to see what happens to my skin. I'll see you over there. Bye.